lesson last week after my sermon. Uh, as you know, I preached on capitalism, and I said that capitalism was a good thing and that it was invented by a Presbyterian. It has a very deep Presbyterian theological roots. And what I learned was that Presbyterians today still love capitalism. I've never had so many people come to me after the sermon and all through the week saying, Mark, that was the greatest sermon in the whole world. I, I think somehow the sermon gave you all permission to become wealthy and powerful. And, and so I'm not sure if it created the wrong impression. I want to revisit capitalism today. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to spoil it completely. <laughs> I just, it was so funny. People say, oh, Mark, I'm so glad capitalism is all right. Thank you for that. Uh, there, there are two things about capitalism that were really great. Last week we looked at one of the things. This week we'll look at the other. The first thing was the fact that um, when in 1776, Adam Smith, the Presbyterian from Kirkcaldy, wrote that wonderful book, An Inquiry into the Wealth of Nations, he said that capitalism was better than communism or socialism because capitalism encouraged personal incentive to work. And, and we all agree with that. And, and he said, look, if somebody starts out with nothing in life, and they work really hard and they become wealthy, they're entitled to their wealth. I think that's the bit everybody wants to um, But remember, he said, if you've got wealth, you have an obligation to share it abundantly and generously. That grace was always a part of Adam Smith's vision of real capitalism. Now, the second thing in capitalism that is really, really powerful, maybe more important from the, than the first one, is that in the capitalist system, there is a belief that it is possible to create wealth. Now, we all take that for granted, but remember, in the system that existed at that time, it was called mercantilism. In that system, there was the belief that in the world there was a fixed amount of wealth. There was a certain amount of money, there were certain amounts of assets, and you could not create additional wealth. So the only way to become wealthy was if you took money from somebody else or assets from somebody else. And along comes Adam Smith and says, no, no, there is no limit to wealth. Wealth can be created. And the notion of the creation of wealth is incredibly central to capitalism. Adam Smith says there are four sources of wealth, and if you have access to any one of the four, you can create new wealth that did not exist before. And the four sources of wealth are land, labor, materials, and ideas. Now, Adam Smith would have tended for that fourth one to use the word technology, but I'm, I'm using the word ideas uh, because, in fact, today, very often we see that ideas create wealth. Certainly in Kitchener-Waterloo, where we have not had a great expansion of, uh, of industry based on land or materials or labor, we have seen how ideas create wealth. In, in all of the, the computer business that's going on here, that's an example of ideas producing new wealth that did not exist before. Let me give you an Old Testament example of someone who believed in the creation of wealth. When Isaac was out in the deserts of Sinai, the first thing he had to do was to dig a well to have water to survive. And after he had done that well, the herdsman of Gerar came along and said, Oh no, this is our land. We want that well. Now you would think that Isaac would stand and fight and say, No, I dug it, it's mine, I want it. But he didn't. He simply said, Go ahead, you guys take it. He walked away. And he dug another well. 
And the herdsmen of Gerar said, that's our way. And Isaac walked away again. And you can see the difference in the mindset of the herdsmen of Gerar. They were mercantilists. They believed that there was only a limited amount of wealth in the world. Only a limited number of wells could be dug in the desert. And so they wanted to take them. But Isaac was a capitalist. He understood that if you had labor, you could create unlimited wealth. And he knew that all the wells that went down into the desert were connecting into the same underground aquifer. He knew that wealth was unlimited. And as long as he was willing to dig, he would create new wells and new wealth. Creation of wealth is central to capitalism. But the creation of wealth is also central to the Christian faith. Now I have to tell you something, and this might be a lesson that I need to give to all of the people who were really confused about last week's sermon. Whatever I said last week, whatever I'm saying this week about the creation of wealth, I am not saying that God wants you to be wealthy or that God promises wealth to you. Don't think that for a moment. There are some wonderful preachers on TV these days coming out of the southern states with a wonderful message called the prosperity gospel. 